We are back with another Wi-Fi battle, and I got one for you today that does not suck. You guessed it. Listen, if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. And as long as you guys enjoy, I'm going to keep putting these out. Especially when Scarlet and Violet are out, we're going to go hard. Anyway, looking at the matchup here, we've got... Uh, this guy's got a pretty interesting team. You know, some pretty strong months, but also kind of some wild cards. Uh, so let's actually just jump right into it. So my opponent is going to lead off with their Garchomp, as I just decided to go with my safest option, which is going to be the Sand Slash. So we're a couple of sandy boys out here having a good time. Looks like a pretty decent matchup for me. Um, and I basically just want to get my Stealth Rock up. Just kind of, I'm just going to get my rocks up and get out of here. So hopefully this Garchomp doesn't have the wrong idea. Uh, so I go for the Stealth Rock, and this Garchomp basically says, Hey, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. And uh, he goes for the Stealth Rock of his own. Uh, which is kind of surprising, you don't generally see Stealth Rock support on a Garchomp, so I send out mine, mine are bigger, and I win that matchup, and uh, I'm thinking, okay, I don't really know what this dude wants to do, so I'm actually just going to go for a Rapid Spin. However, eh, Garchomp decides to take this date the wrong way and goes for a Swords Dance, so that's relatively scary, although with the Rapid Spin that's able to get rid of his Stealth Rock, I can bring in my Frostlass. Um, and keep that Focus Sash intact if I need to just basically bring that thing in and, and go for an Ice Beam. So, even though I do have an answer for this thing, a plus two Guard Chomp at pretty much any time is about scary as hell. Uh, because Homegirl is going to be able to pretty much rip through Sand Slash, so I can't really switch anything in. And I now realize we're actually both female, so the Stealth Cox thing didn't make any sense, but whatever. So, I make the executive decision that Sand Slash is just going to stay in here and take the Earthquake and whatever happens, happens. Um, I had a couple options here. I could have switched into Frostlass, get knocked down to my Sash initially, and then outspeed and kill with an Ice Beam. Uh, but I decided that I'd rather have that Sash intact with the Frostlass, and Sand Slash didn't look super useful in this matchup. So sometimes, you know, you got to do what you got to do, and Sand Jobs, you know, just ended up on the wrong side of it. So I can freely send in my Icy Shardy here and not have to worry about some Stealth Rock. I can then go for an Ice Beam, and I'm expecting a switch. However, I don't really want to overpredict at this point. Um, and it looks like the early setup Garchomp didn't work out, as it doesn't really work out setting up Mon like that early. Uh, doesn't generally go in your favor because, you know, the odds are the opponent has something to, to stop the sweep. So, uh, he actually ends up going into the Magna Zone here on the Ice Beam, which is totally fine by me. This allows me to just kind of pivot and then re-evaluate re the situation here as I want to save the Frostlass. And I, have a, and I have an option here. I could go right into the Dug Trio expecting an Electric Attack, or if he decides to get fancy and go for something like a Flash Cannon, I get destroyed. Uh, so I go with like the Middle Ground play, which is actually going into Cradilly. Now this thing is about specially defensive as tits, and I can take an attack from this thing pretty nicely, as it ends up going for the Volt Switch, which shows me you know, I could have gone for Dug Trio there, Arena trapped it, and then grabbed the KO. Uh, but not yet, at least, as this allows him to pivot into Hitmonchan. So I'm finding myself on the wrong side of this shit, as, you know, Cradilly's kind of like a, a living punching bag for old Jackie Chan over here, and I really cannot uh, be forced to stay in here, because... Uh, this thing could either set up, it could likely rapid spin, but it's not really worth me staying in here. So, um, I actually decide to end up switching into the McNugget. The spicy McNugget is coming back, and I'm expecting a fighting attack or a rapid spin. Regardless, Moltres has a decent matchup here. Um, on the rapid spin, it would have been nice for me to bring in Frostlass, but if it went for something else, then I'm just in a position where... Um, if it went for something like a Fire Punch on the Prediction, I'd be bad. So I decide Moltres has a decent switch in here. Um, it does go for the Rapid Spin, gets rid of the Stealth Rock, so <laughs> Sand Slash does die in vain, but it's fine. Because this allows me to go for a nice little Specs Air Slash, and that does take care of the Hitmonchan. So Moltres, yet again, just out here grabbing kills like an absolute monster. As long as there's not Stealth Rock around, this chicken can freely switch in and do some shit. So you absolutely love to see it. And now he knows, based off of that damage, that I am in fact choice specs. So he brings in the Magnazone knowing I can't flamethrower, and I know for sure he's going for an electric attack here, so I can bring in the hot dogs. The ground dogs come in, and uh, he does end up going for the Volt Switch, which is amazing. And now, my friend, you are, you are stuck as hell. Uh, because I have Arena Trap, he's not able to switch out and consider yourself destroyed by the ground glizzy. So the Earthquake is able to take care of the Magnazone. Amazing switch in. Uh, Doug Trio is super nice for stuff like that. Um, Arena Trap can usually grab you like a couple kills a game, and you just, the, the, the glizzies can't be stopped, it's, I'm serious, no, everybody sleeps on Dug Trio, but like, I don't know how many times I gotta teach people this lesson, I'm out here force feeding people these ground hot dogs, and somebody's gotta do it, so, he goes into Mamoswine on a free switch, and I don't really wanna stay in there and go for the Earthquake, um, as it's not gonna grab me a kill, and I go, decide to go into Cray Dilly, which was kind of a death fodder move, 
Um, just kind of looking at the matchup, I didn't really have a switch into a Mammoth Swine, but it actually goes for a Freeze Dry, which uh, you do not ever see Mammoth Swine going for a special attack unless I'm using one of my teams where they do the opposite of what they're supposed to. <laughs> um, so this actually works out greatly for me because I'm specially defensive as hell. I can take two of them and then I fire off a nice little Leech Seed and it's looking like I'm thinking after the Leech Seed recovery plus leftovers, I could probably take one more and then fire off a, a Rock Slide for some stab damage. Um, so I get a little bit lucky there. He was probably trying to trying to catch people by surprise going for the special Mammoth Swine, which I gotta respect it. My dude is out here uh, taking after <laughs> my, my stupid ideas. But um, I'm either thinking Earthquake or Rock Slide. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna go for the Rock Slide. As he decides to switch out, he does not want to be seated and goes into Haunch Crow, which is absolutely amazing. Um, old Pimp Crow comes out looking epic and purple, and the Rock Slide is going to catch this dude off guard. As not a lot of Cradillies do carry the Rock Slide support, so he's probably thinking something like, uh, like an Earthquake, but that's just going to take care of Haunch Crow right away. Poor little Haunch Crow didn't get to do a damn thing. Uh, I think it really suffered, it suffered the consequence of being put in BDSP without its like full move pool. Um, I gotta probably try to use Haunch Crow pretty soon because it's such a cool mon, but it's just really kind of overshadowed by like everything. Um, but I'm able to grab a free kill there with Cradilly, so we will absolutely take it, and that is amazing. So he ends up going back into the Mammoth Swine, and I'm able to actually live with four HP because, I, like I've said before, Cradilly is a defensive unit, and this allows me to uh, get actually a critical hit, which is kind of funny. It doesn't really do a whole lot of damage, and it doesn't matter because as long as this Mammoth Swine is in chip range, um, in range at like not full HP, um, my Sharpedo can take care of it. So that's kind of what my plan was. I'm, I'm seeing the Sharpedo in the back pocket knowing that I have likely a, a late game sweep coming as long as their Tyranitar isn't too big of a dickhead. So um, he actually ends up setting up the Stealth Rock there, which is a good play because it doesn't really matter how much I knock down this Mammoth Swine. Uh, it's going to die to an attack from Sharpedo anyway. So he grabs up the, he, he gets the free Stealth Cox up. Um, and this is going to be one more freeze dry to take me out. So Cradilly goes down, but not before the damage is done. Uh, the Haunch Crow being taken care of is totally fine by me. And uh, now I get a free switch. So I decide to go into the Sharpedo. I can't fully set up the sweep yet, but I can at least um, start to do some 50% shark shit. And uh, even without the tail, the Sharpedo is just an absolute scare to pretty much everybody. So. I go for the liquidation here, it is going to take care of the Mammoth Swine, obviously faster, and then after a speed boost, of course, I'm going to be about fast as hell, and uh, don't have to worry about the Swine anymore, so that is pretty solid. So at this point in the match, he's down to two Pokemon left. Unfortunately for me, it's the two scariest Mons left, it's the Tyranitar and the Garchomp. A couple of Sandy Lads I got to get through, but I think I have the, the, kind of, the, the offensive weapons to do it. So, he brings in Tyranitar, and like I said earlier, at full health, without Stealth Rock or anything, I'm not going to be able to knock this thing out with just Sharpedo. Um, and I do want to save the Sharpedo for later. So what I decide to do is go into Moltres, essentially as expecting um, just something to be able to kill this. I was hoping maybe to come in on an Earthquake, get some little chip damage or something. Um, but even if McNugget goes down, I can just go right into... Uh, the Doug Trio. Turns out to be a Thunderbolt, so he's actually going to be running special attacking Tyranitar as well, which does catch me off guard, so you don't, you never really see that. <laughs> um, so shout out to this dude again for using just some weird stuff. So this does allow me a free switch. Doug Trio comes into the Sandstorm feeling absolutely at home here, and I'm of course going to be able to outspeed with a nice Choice Bandit Earthquake. The Glazy's going to do it to him again. I go for it, and surprisingly, Tyranitar actually lives it with like 10 HP. Uh, which is actually kind of crazy. But luckily for me, it is special attacking Tyranitar, which is not going to be quite as strong, and the Dark Pulse isn't going to be enough to take care of me, which is pretty solid. Doug Trio doesn't generally live anything, so just seeing him live something from a Tyranitar is pretty sweet. So I end, <laughs> end up going for one more Earthquake. It is going to take care of the Godzilla, and all that is left is going to be that Garchomp. So I do have a couple weapons left. I've still got one Earthquake in the chamber on the Doug Trio, plus I have the Sharpedo and the Frostlass in the back. However, Frostlass doesn't get the luxury of switching in, uh, keeping that Focus Sash because, of course, there's both uh, Stealth Rock and the, the Sandstorm. But I go for the Earthquake here. Nice Choice Bandit EQ is actually going to do a whole bunch of damage to this fella. And he actually just goes ahead. Earth I feel like Earthquake should do more damage to Doug Trio in general because I swear I'm just, just anchored to the Earth. That shit would hurt real bad. And now there's just hot dog shit everywhere. So the, now someone's got to come in here and clean this up. I would not want to be the janitor in charge of cleaning the Wi-Fi room up. But uh, anyway, I'm able to get a free switch in here. I feel like Sharpedo deserves the right to do it. All I got to do is uh, actually just go for a Protect so that I can activate my Speed Boost ability. Because naturally, I'm not quite faster. 
Uh, but after plus one, I should be able to do it. So uh, I go for the protect here, and Garchomp is basically like, hey, you're a shark too. I we should be homies. But I saw what you did to my Sand Slash earlier, so we are no, we're, we're not friendly sharks today. As uh, I'm about to show him that the Water Shark is, in fact, the better version of the shark because that guy's all sandy and, and, and dirty and shit. My Sharky is squeaky clean. Half the time I'm doing, I feel like I'm talking about absolute nonsense, but. Uh, you know, it is what it is. So I just go for an Ice Fang here, and uh, the better Shark comes out on top, as he actually doesn't give me the, the luxury of, of grabbing that last kill. But, still gonna be a pretty solid match there. I had a, a good time using this team. Um, thank you guys very much for watching. As always, I really do appreciate all the support. You guys are amazing, and I will see you next time. Peace out.